once you get settled into your mat, you can find your child's pose. There's lots of variations that child's pose can take. So you can have big toes together, knees wide. You might have your legs more parallel to each other, more support for the belly on the thighs. You can have the arms reaching out ahead, or you can have the arms tucked kind of outside of the legs, palms reaching back. Allow yourself in the first few moments here to simply settle into the shape. Notice the breath. Notice how deep it goes into the body. Notice the pace of the breath, the length of the inhale, the length of the exhale. And notice too if there are any places within the body that seem to be holding any tension or maybe seem to be experiencing any discomfort. Let's draw the breath really deeply in, filling up the entire torso, filling up even the throat. And then at the top, hold the breath, feel the expansion of the rib cage and try to sip in just a little more air. A little more, a little more. And then open the mouth, exhale, let it go. Let's do one more of those, inhaling really fully. Feeling the rib cage expand, the skin between each rib expand. Sip in a little more, a little more, and a little more. Exhale through the mouth, let it go. On your next exhale, Let's tend the fingers on an inhale, we'll just remain here. And then exhale, we're going to really press the fingertips into the mat, draw the navel in, lift the torso just a little bit from the legs. So allowing yourself to be in this kind of rounded pose here. Inhale to soften back down. Exhale, draw the navel in, let it be the lift point, lifting up the back side of the body. Rounding through the shoulders. Inhale, soften. Exhale, pulse up. Inhale, soften. Exhale, pulse up. This time we're going to crawl the hands all the way to the left. Keep those fingers tented. Feel that navel draw in. And then inhale, soften the torso down. Allow that right hip to get really heavy here. You'll notice the breath more through the right side of the body while we're here. And then on an inhale, lift back up, round through the shoulders, crawl those fingers all the way over to the right side of the mat. And inhale to really soften back down. This time the left hip is heavy. We feel the breath maybe more through the left side of the body. On an exhale, draw the navel in, lift the torso a bit, crawl back to center. Keep the torso lifted, round even more. We can tuck the chin just a little bit here. And then we're gonna pull all the way up into hands and knees. Let the palms come to the mat, alternately straighten one leg and then the other. Maybe once more either side. From here, let's do some circling over the wrists here for just a moment. Again, we can always think of gripping with the fingertips. That provides 
just a little bit of engagement. We've been talking about that quite a bit lately, those isometric stretches, that's reverse direction, ways to engage through the body, even while we're trying to stretch. It provides not only safety for the body as we're stretching, but it also actually allows us to go deeper. And we'll play with that a little bit in a few poses today. All right, let's go ahead, turn those fingertips to point outward and we'll just gently rock side to side, keeping the grip of the fingertips. You can play with rounding the shoulders here or lifting the heart. So finding a little bit of cat cow, even while you're going side to side. One more full cycle of breath, whatever you're doing. And then we'll return to center. On an inhale, we're gonna sweep this right arm up. Exhale, thread it through. Think of right shoulder comes to the mat, right ear comes to the mat. Inhale, lift it back up. Try to open a little bit more. Exhale, thread it through. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, thread through. And from here, we're going to actually let the right ear stay on the mat. Press that right shoulder into the mat enough that you feel yourself twist open to the left a little more. Let's inhale this left arm up and wrap it around, reaching for that right thigh. Maybe the hand stays at the low back, maybe it hooks to the thigh. So think of opening that left shoulder, stacking it atop the right. The gaze can even go toward the ceiling as you roll maybe toward the back side of the head just a little bit. Take a couple deep breaths here, noticing where in the body you feel it, where in the shoulder girdle you feel it. Inhale, gently release this left hand, bring it back to the mat, sweep this right arm all the way back up, and then exhale, let it plant on the mat. Let's do a couple rounds of cat cow just to rinse that off and also to notice the differences between left and right side of body at this point. Go ahead and come back to neutral. We'll move to the other side. So inhale, sweep this left arm up. Exhale, thread it through. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, thread through. Inhale, up. Exhale through, and this time we'll hold. So allow yourself to lower the left ear, left shoulder, press into that left shoulder, enough that we can maybe lift this right arm up. Maybe the hand comes to the low back, or maybe it wraps around, grabbing the left thigh. Either way, think of peeling that right shoulder open, stacking it atop the left. Keep pressing into the back side of this left hand, left shoulder, and maybe the gaze even can come toward the ceiling a little bit. On every exhale, we have the opportunity to deepen the twist a little bit. On inhales, the breath might pull us out of the shape a little. That's okay. Use an inhale to gently unwind. Right hand returns to the mat. Left arm reaches all the way up. And then returns to the mat as well. And from here, we have a couple rounds of cat-cow. Moving at your own pace. Last round. Inhale and exhale. And return to a neutral spine. From here, we're gonna go ahead and move the hands forward a hand print, tuck the toes under, and we're going to make our way into a down dog through three rounds of this extended cat-cow. 
So we'll inhale, lifting the heart. Exhale, tuck the tail. Press the mat away, lift the knees a little. Inhale through cow, knees lower. Exhale, back to cat, press the knees up. Once more. Exhale, press all the way up and back, downward facing dog. Give yourself a chance to explore here. Our first time here today. Maybe we bend the knees deeply and reach the torso back. Maybe we bicycle the heels. One more full breath here. And then we can look toward the hands. We're gonna make a gentle hop toward the front edge of the mat. Remember to let the knees be really soft and just hop as far forward as feels okay. Even if that doesn't mean the front edge of the mat, just hop to where it feels okay. And then lift up to standing there, half lift, long spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach all the way up. And exhale those hands through heart center. Inhale, arms up. Turn the palms face forward, hold right thumb and fist, catch that wrist with the left hand and exhale, pull to the left. Really press down through both feet and try to contract evenly on the left side of the body so that we're not just reaching the arms over, we're really reaching the whole torso over while the hips go the other direction. Inhale through center, switch the grip, and exhale this time to the right, evenly contracting on the right side of the body. Hips push to the left. Inhale up through center, and exhale, soften those knees, fold. Inhale, half lift, long spine. Exhale, soften. Plant those hands. Slide the right foot back. Lower that knee to inhale, chest and chin up. And then exhale, left foot back, downward facing dog. Take one big inhale here. One big exhale. And then rock forward into a plank, lower the knees. And then let the elbows graze the ribs as you lower chest and chin. Inhale, pull that heart through and up for a cobra pose. Exhale, release. Inhale, up and back, downward facing dog. Just a couple of breaths here to reset. Make any adjustments, any movements that feel good. And then look toward the hands. We're gonna soften those knees again and just hop as far forward as feels okay. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Uttanasana. Exhale, hands through heart center. Inhale, arms up. This time we're gonna grab opposite elbows overhead. And we'll exhale first to the right. Hips will go to the left. This makes it a little bit easier to recruit more of the body as opposed to just using the arms to pull one way and then really exaggerate the hips going the other direction. Keep trying to gently hug those shoulders toward each other on the back side of the body. And then inhale all the way up through center. Switch which elbow is in front. And then exhale to the other side. Again, hips press away. Shoulder blades hug gently in toward midline. Inhale, 
Inhale, up through center. Exhale, release the grip, pull all the way down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Left foot steps back, lower that knee to inhale, chest and chin up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Give yourself two breaths here. At the bottom of the next exhale, rock forward, lower the knees, lower the chest and chin. Inhale, pull that heart through, finding your cobra. Exhale, fold. Inhale, find your way up and back, downward facing dog. One breath here, inhale, exhale. And then look toward the hands. We're gonna hop the feet a little bit wider. So you might even start with your feet a little wide at the back edge of the mat. And then bend those knees, look toward the hands. As you lift the hips, think of the weight shifting into the hands for just a moment. And then allowing the light hop. So feet are wide, toes can angle out. We're in our yogi squat at the front of the mat, Malasana. Press hands together, press elbows to knees. The funny thing about this pose is mala means garland, but mala means poop in Sanskrit. So it, if you say it correctly, it's garland pose or yogi squat. But if you say it incorrectly, it's poop pose. And I feel like that's kind of fitting too. So anyway, some, some Sanskrit trivia for you today. Let's go ahead and take one more breath here. Think of drawing sit bones toward each other. Feel the pressure lessen on the outsides of the elbows when that happens. And then on an inhale, we're gonna press into the feet, come all the way to standing, reach those hands up, Pivot the feet to face forward and exhale, hands through heart center. Keeping hands at heart center, we're gonna step the feet beneath the hips and enter into just a little bit of a back bend here, but we're gonna keep the hands at the heart to make it more active. So start by pressing into all four corners of each foot, lift the kneecaps, firm up the thighs. Draw sit bones toward each other, lift through the pelvic floor and think of the navel drawing in. From here, keep the chin tucked, but let the shoulders draw gently toward each other on the back. As the hips press forward, you can begin to lift the heart, pressing the heart into the thumbs. Shoulders still draw together on the back side of the body, and then the chin can draw gently back, and then maybe a little bit up. So we should feel the back side of the neck engage. The head isn't just flopping to the back. Keep pressing into the feet, keep lifting up and out of the sacrum. If you're shaky here, that's totally normal. On an inhale, raise all the way up, reach those arms up. Exhale, soften the knees, waterfall over the legs. For this first forward fold, first let the hands kind of hover above the mat, maybe even grab elbows, and just sway side to side. Shake the head out. And then from here, maybe that feels good and you want to stay there. Or maybe you want to go a little bit deeper. If you want to go deeper, we can use opposing forces to find that depth. So it might look like grabbing the back sides of the legs and pulling the torso down. It might look like grabbing peace fingers around the insides of the big toes and pulling the torso down. Wherever you are, make sure the head is really heavy. You can nod it yes, shake it no. It's fine if there's a little bend in the knees. Don't worry about straightness of legs. 
Just worry about sensation here. One more breath. Feel the navel really draw in on the exhale, creating a little more space for you. And then inhale, half lift for that long spine. Exhale, soften. Heel toe the feet till big toes are touching. Keep those knees bent and then we're gonna sweep the arms forward and up. Utkatasana, chair pose. Check if the knees are collapsing into each other or if we're evenly engaged through all four corners of each foot. Maybe we sit back just a little bit more. Feel the navel drawn in and up here. It does it on its own. It's just a really subtle engagement. And then inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale those hands through heart center. From here, we're going to keep hands at heart center and we're gonna do a few leg lifts with this left leg. So let's start by really pressing into all four corners of the right foot and bring the heel of the left foot to the mat in front of us, toes flexed up. On an exhale, we're gonna lift that leg as much as we can, feeling that hip flexor really contract and then lower. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Last one's gonna be a hold. Lift, pulse up for five, four, three, two, one. Lower that heel to the mat. Go ahead, shake it out. This right ankle maybe wants some circles. So that's a really active version of that pose. All right, we're working against gravity. The hip flexor is trying its hardest, but man, that's hard. So we're gonna add a passive element to it. So this is what we call an active passive shape. And now we have a bind, we're still working against gravity, but the bind eases the process. So we'll go ahead and bring hands to hips for this one. Again, press into the right foot, lift the left knee. All right, toes are flexed. Option here to grab the left shin with the left hand from the outside, wrap around or we can grab peace fingers around the big toe. All right. Now notice how here it's easier for that left leg to be lifted just by holding it with the left hand. Option to stay here or to kick the left foot forward any amount. Don't worry about that leg straightening. Don't worry about how high it lifts, but keep pressing into the right leg. Keep a long spine. Hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Gently bring the knee back in, set that foot down, walk it out. So not to say that that shape is easier, but the holding of the leg up <laughs> is the part that becomes a little easier with the bind. Okay. We're gonna do something very similar but we're gonna go out to the left side. So we'll start by planting the right foot, left heel planted out to the left, but the toes are angled out to the left. You're probably dreading what's coming. If you're like, oh crap, then no, you're not alone, I'm there too. All right, so on an exhale, we're gonna lift the left leg out to the side, <laughs> that cramp, and lower. Lift, and lower. Lift, hold here for five, four, three, two, one, lower down, walk it out. Whew, those abductors working hard there. But we're about to make it easier because we're gonna do that same thing where we add the bind. So plant both feet, but then come up onto the toes of the left, bend that knee up. Option to again, grab the shin or to grab the big toe. And then wing that left leg open to the left, wherever you are. Okay, you can stay right here, or you can exhale to kick that foot straight any amount out to the left side. We're holding here for five, four, 
Bring those sit bones together, it'll make it easier. Three, two, one, let it go, walk it out. Whew, that was a lot to start with. All right, let's do some stretching here. So we just really worked this left hip flexor and I know the right ankle is tired, but I do have one standing shape I wanna do to stretch this left leg. We'll get to it in just a moment though, because we are gonna do one that's a little bit nicer. So plant the right foot, slide this left foot back. Start for a moment in just your high lunge. Give yourself a second here to feel the opening of this left hip. It probably feels more obvious right now than it might normally feel in a high lunge, just because we did so much active work with it. And then if this is feeling good, stay here. But if you want to deepen, we can lower the left knee and find our low lunge. If you want to deepen, or if you just want to take some pressure off that right leg, which it might appreciate right now too. All right, so low lunge, arms can be lifted, arms can be cactused. We can always bind the back leg. Every exhale, let the hips soften a little bit more. One more breath, inhale and exhale. And then gently inhale to ease your way forward and out of this. From here, we're gonna sweep this right foot back, tuck the toes, find plank, and we'll move through our first full vinyasa. So rocking the shoulders past the wrists before we bend halfway down into chaturanga. And then inhale, pull through. Upward dog. Exhale, half push up and back. Downward facing dog. Give yourself a couple breaths here. And looking at the feet, we're going to step them forward a footprint. Drag the right hand back, tent those fingers outside of the right foot or grab any part of the right leg. From here, once you are planted, whatever your right hand's doing, draw right shoulder forward, left back. Look between the feet, point the left toes, maybe begin to lift that left leg up. The left leg is lifted, slowly lower it down. Release the right hand back to the mat. And we're gonna crawl the hands all the way to the feet at the back edge. So from here, take a moment in this forward fold, shake things out. And then on an inhale, rise all the way up to standing. And exhale those hands through heart center. We are again going to balance on that right leg. This will be the last balancing pose that we do on this side. But this time we're going to bring the left leg behind us for dancer pose. So we can start by simply rooting into the right foot and then reaching left heel towards sit bone. Reaching back with the left hand, we can grab the outside edge, thumb points down, or we can grab the inside edge, thumb points up. Notice it's just a different range of motion for the left shoulder. Whichever one feels better to you is gonna be fine for what we're doing today. Let's bring the right hand in front of us parallel to the mat, palm face down. As the left foot kicks into the left hand, keep drawing that left shoulder forward, left hip down trying to keep everything square. And then we feel the torso hinge as that right hand reaches, reaches, reaches. Keep contracting through that left glute, lifting through that left knee, hold for three, two, one. Slow release back, let it go, shake it out. 
It might feel really good to bring the top of the right foot to the mat, stretch out the front side of that ankle, or to do some circles. Our stabilizers are getting worked today. All right, so we're here at the back edge of our mat. All we're gonna do is inhale, sweep those arms up, and exhale, fold down. Crawl the hands forward. Find your down dog. Give yourself a breath here, and then we're just gonna hop to the front. We're gonna repeat that set on the other side. So we're really just working primarily a couple ranges of motion. We have a little bit of abduction, but we'll go deeper in that range of motion later. Look toward the hands. Remember, this is our hop wide, so you might even start the feet a little wider than normal. And think of as you lift the feet off the mat, shifting the weight into the hands to control for a nice soft landing. All right, as you're ready, use an exhale and hop. Find your malasana. Bring hands to heart center. Elbows to knees. Draw sit bones toward each other. This is a great place actually to check for pelvic floor engagement. So sometimes I cue that in a pose and it's hard to necessarily feel what's going on. So think of sit bones drawing toward each other and then think of lifting anal and urethral sphincters in and up. There should be an, not an obvious, but a discernible lessening of pressure on the outsides of the elbows. And it should feel like the energy is drawing in and up as opposed to sinking down. So you can play with that a little bit and just notice what that sensation is. That's a great engagement to use when we're in any back bend. And then from here, using the strength of the legs, press into the feet, lift all the way up to standing. And exhale, hands to heart center. Turn the feet to face forward. Step the feet beneath the hips. And keep hands at heart center. We're going to enter into that back bend again, that active back bend with the hands at the heart. So press into the feet, find that pelvic floor lift again. Think of sit bones in, sphincters lift. And then from there, navel draws in, hips press forward, heart lifts up, chin draws back, and then maybe a little bit up. If you want to deepen from here, you can always bring the thumbs toward the shoulders, acting as though you're going to drop back into a wheel pose, which we're not going to do, but we can set up. On an inhale, lift all the way up. Reach those arms up. And then exhale, soften the knees, fold forward. Be as passive or as active as you want to be here. The only thing that I require here is that you let the head be heavy. Release any holding within the neck, within the jaw. But other than that, whatever else feels good in your body. On an inhale, soften into those knees. Lengthen the spine to a half lift. Exhale to surrender. Inhale to press your way up to standing. 
And exhale those hands to heart center. This is where we move into those really active leg lifts. So start by pressing into the left foot. Heel of the right foot comes to the mat, toes flex back. Use an exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Two more. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. This last one is a hold. Pulse up for five, four, three, two, one. Lower down, walk it out. And we'll set up for the active passive version of this. So again, press into the left foot. This time we can bring hands to hips. Lift the right knee with a bend in it, toes are flexed. Either grab around the leg to the shin or grab peace fingers around that big toe. Find a long spine first. And then if you wish, we can exhale to straighten that right leg any amount. Don't worry about how straight it gets. Don't worry about how high you lift it. We're just keeping it kicking straight ahead. Keep pressing into that left foot. Hold for four, three, two, one. Bend that leg, slowly lower, walk it out. All right, now we're gonna go to the side with this leg. Work some different muscles. So, We'll plant the right heel, toes point up, but pointing to the right. Try to keep the hips square. Really press into that left foot, firm up through the left side for some stability, and then exhale to lift, inhale to lower. Lift, lower. Last one, we only do three here. Lift, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Lower down, walk it out. <sighs> Man, that, there's, that's a humbling <laughs> shape for me. <laughs> it's, it's always like, why can't I lift my leg? It seems like I should be able to. Okay, let's go ahead and root into this left foot again. This time we're gonna lift the right knee up. Option to either grab the shin or to grab the big toe. First, get long again through the spine. Bring that right leg out to the right. Draw sit bones toward each other. That'll give some stability. And then on an exhale, kick that leg any amount. Keep reaching tall, that'll actually help. It'll help you to lean back a bit. Opposing forces for four, three, two, one. Bring it in, nice job guys, that looked awesome. And shake it out. Whew, all right, let's stretch these hips out now. So let's stand at the front edge, slide the right foot back. Find just a nice high lunge first. That right hip flexor just did a lot, so we can probably already feel it stretching here in this less deep pose than we're about to enter into. Now, if you want to deepen it, or if you just wanna give this left leg a break from all the strength work it's been doing, lower the right knee and find your low lunge. Find whatever arm variation you did on the other side. You balance the back leg, do that again. Every exhale, let those hips get a little bit heavier. One more breath. And then use an inhale to come up out of this. Plant the hands, sweep this left foot back, curl the toes under, find your plank. Option to move through a vinyasa or to move through any other thing that might feel good here.
We'll meet in a downward dog. And looking at the feet, we'll set them forward a footprint. So from here, this time we'll drag the left fingertips back. Either tent them outside the left foot or grab onto the left leg. Square the shoulders left forward, right back. Come up onto the toes of the right foot. Point those toes to then lift. Keep a steady breath. There's going to be fluctuations and wiggles. Try to make them small, but they become small with a lot of gentleness, not with forcefulness. Lower the right leg if it's lifted. Bring the left hand back to the mat and crawl all the way back to your feet. Inhale, rise all the way up. And exhale those hands through heart center. And we'll set up for dancer on this side. So again, the left leg and ankle are probably a little tired. This is our last balancing pose. We'll shift the weight into that left foot, come up onto the toes of the right, and then bring right heel towards sit bone. Notice a nice long spine here first, and then reach back, grabbing either the outside of the ankle or the inside, whatever you did last time. And then bring left arm straight out, palm face down. From here, kick the foot into the hand and allow your torso to come forward. Keep drawing right shoulder down, right hip down. Hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly come up, release, let it go. Helps to do some body wiggles. All right. From here, inhale the arms up and exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, half lift. And from here, we're just going to heel toe the feet wide. Okay, so they're probably off of the mat. Angle the toes out, bring the hands to the knees, and we'll find a supported goddess squat. All right, we can wiggle side to side here. This is another great place to find that pelvic floor engagement to open the legs wider. So think of sit bones draw in, sphincters squeeze up, Keep a long spine forward and then on an exhale, we're going to lower the right shoulder, look over the left. Inhale up through center. Exhale, lower the left shoulder, look over the right. Inhale up through center. Exhale, lift the torso up, keep the legs bent. Arms can reach up toward one another. Keep drawing sit bones in. Keep reaching knees out. Squat a little bit deeper. Hold for four, three, two, one. Inhale up. Angle the toes to point forward. And then exhale, hinge all the way down. Wide legged forward fold. Allow yourself to really soften here. We have a lot of options in this shape. We can be passive, let gravity do the work. We can add that bind and grab the legs or tension, our hands on the mat between the legs to pull the torso down. This is also a great place to find a headstand. So if you're feeling like that today, set up for either your tripod headstand or your bound headstand. I usually cue a bound. So today I'll cue a tripod in case you want to do that. So what we'll essentially do is plant the hands beneath the shoulders. And then we can really bend the knees to plant the head in front of the fingers. We want to be able to see 
both of our hands. So we're in kind of an equilateral triangle with our palms and our head. Now from here, step the feet in closer and bring the knees to the backs of the elbows. Think of elbows drawing in and we're kind of pushing into the hands and you'll feel the chest engage. Then we can lift the heels or the toes off the mat. Now from here, we might wanna stay where we are or we might wanna lift one leg and then the other or both legs. We might wanna come back down to our wide leg forward fold, whatever feels best. We're here for three more breaths. So use them as you see fit. On your next inhale, let's crawl the hands forward a little bit. Plant the left hand, sweep this right arm up. Taking a nice twist. Think of stacking the shoulders like we did at the start of class in that thread the needle position. And then exhale, release the right hand to the mat. Switch the hands out. Inhale, left arm up. Again, stack the shoulders. Exhale, left arm down. Crawl those hands forward, come to the knees, and then come all the way to the belly. We're gonna end tonight with some back bending. We did some nice active back bending, but I wanna do a little bit more. So let's start by keeping the feet on the ground, the hips on the ground. And we're just going to bring the hands kind of out wide, but in line with the shoulders. All right, you can tempt the fingers or you can let the palms be on the mat. Try not to press into the hands at all. Just allow them to be heavy on the mat. And on an inhale, I want you to think of your tail tucking a little bit and your body just peeling up. Just a nice little amount. And then exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. This time you might even hover the hands off the mat a little bit. Think of shoulder blades hugging toward each other. Lift the heart a little bit more. Think of drawing the chin in and back. Maybe that lifts the heart a little bit more. And then exhale, lower. Wiggle it out. Bring the hands in so they're underneath the shoulders now, touching the body. We're gonna do that same thing. So the feet stay on the mat, pelvis stays on the mat. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Tent the fingers, inhale, lift. Press into the hands, come all the way up as much as feels good. And then I want you to gently lower to the point that you can support yourself without your fingers. All right, so let them hover. Shoulders squeeze in, chin draws back. Feel as the chin draws back, the torso lifts just the tiniest amount. Maybe lift the legs to join. Keep lifting that chin back and up. Feel the torso engage evenly all along the length of the spine. Feel the glutes engage to lift those legs a little bit higher. Hold for four, three, two, one, soften into the mat. Wiggle those hips out. From here, let's press up and back to a seat. So we have big toes together, knees wide. We're seated upright. 
In these last couple moments here, I invite you to scan through the body and simply notice. Notice anything that feels like it could use some attention. For example, we did not do external rotation today. We did not do a pigeon pose. So that could feel really nice. We did some active spinal twists, but we didn't have one that was fully utilizing gravity. So maybe lying on the back to do a spinal twist would feel good. Maybe finding a child's pose or laying on the back and hugging knees to the chest to kind of compensate for that back bending we just did would feel good. But ultimately, Finish this body scan and let that be your guidance in these next couple minutes of class. And as you feel ready, move into whatever poses seem to be calling out to you. If you've done anything asymmetrical, move to the other side. Use the next few moments to find whatever shape it is that you'd like to close this class within. Whether that be lying down, maybe seated, legs up the wall or feet together, knees wide. And as soon as you arrive in that shape, let the breath come and go naturally. Release any holding all the way from the toes up to the crown of the head. Softening completely into the mat beneath you. Simply notice the stillness. Notice the space that comes with slowing down, focusing on a single thing, uniting body and breath. One definition of the word meditation is when the body and the mind are having the same experience. We do that when we focus the body and the mind together on the mat. But we do that at various points throughout our day as well. 
And whatever that alignment happens, that's where presence happens. That's where instead of time flying by, we notice it. Where we have power to act within it. So let this moment here be a reminder of what that feels like. Let it be an anchor to draw us back again and again whenever we get swept away. As you feel ready to do so, you can begin to deepen the breath. With that depth of breath, might come small movements or wiggles, whether you're seated or lying down. can all eventually arrive at a seat. And from here, we can sweep those arms out to the sides and up, palms touching overhead. We'll exhale, thumbs pausing at the forehead, pausing at the mouth, and pausing at heart center, knowing that when the body, the breath, and the intelligence within us are all aligned, that's what we can call meditation, but that's also what we can simply call presence. What we can call a place of empowerment. And to also remind ourselves, but also to just unite over our interconnectedness, I'm gonna invite you to close class today with an om and three shantis. The three shantis meaning peace, 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 but first of all, peace within my individual being, peace within this community of which I'm a part. And finally, peace to all those communities surrounding all those places where maybe I don't personally have an impact, but I still want there to be peace. So if that resonates with you, feel free to join. Otherwise, if there's a different message or thought you wanna send out into the world, feel free to do so at this time. We'll start with our own though, so we can exhale all the breath from the body. Inhale fully. Oh. Inhale for three shanties. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. The light within me recognizes and honors the light within each of you. Namaste.